All right, so I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, do we have any public participation? There's none in the participant list. Beautiful. Uh, okay, so uh, then what I'd like to do is just have you kind of run through what you've got uh, for your budget, anything that's, you know, what you were thinking about as you put it together, uh, anything you can provide in terms of insights, and then we will discuss. Okay. So the, um, nothing major other than, you know, annual increases as we see percentages go up for our software maintenance or materials and supplies. Um, the biggest change that we have is in our personal services line item with salaries. Mm -hmm. So we have, overall, we're asking for a little bit less, but we're gonna be doing more work with the gas and light department. Which is why the enterprise fund is kicking in significantly more. Correct. So gas and light has, um, I don't know if you know, but they have one guy over there, in, but they have a ton of projects. A lot of the stuff they're doing is stuff I used to consult for before working here. And actually Gas and Light was an old client of where I worked. So I'm gonna work with them outside of our normal hours here. And we're gonna charge back for that time. And it's just, you'll see a bigger increase in my salary for the work I'm doing, but it's only fractional compared to what we're gonna charge back. Right, because overall the ask is slightly less. Yeah, so it's the amount of work that we're gonna do, it's gonna cover all the raises for everyone in the department and a little bit more. And we were conservative with what we estimated that they'll need. So talking with their IT guy over there, he anticipates it's gonna be more work than we actually put down on here. Yeah. So hopefully we come in well under. And is this something that will continue uh, next year? as well yeah, like will they should, continue they have so much work that it should continue year after year if at any point it does stop i have no problem with reducing my salary back down great okay other than that yeah everything else is just um very minor changes okay I don't know if you had any particular questions on it. So um, can you just talk a little bit about uh, software maintenance and how, how that's going? Sure, um, the biggest part of software maintenance, well, most everything is going to, they want that recurring revenue. So you get your annual support fees. Yep. Um, and like we see every year, it's, the Munis software, which is our line of business software for accounting, HR, utility billing, um, the PO system, that just goes up every year. And that's the largest portion that we have. I'm just doing a subtotal right now. So it's going to be about 88,000 or a little over 88,000 next year. Yep. That one is an increase of about 4,000 over the prior year. So it's about 5%. Yep. Um, aside from that, we have, um, you know, you, we have Assess Pro, it's for Patriot Properties. Anyone that goes on the assessor site, they can link in there. Um, you might've seen some of these before. Virtual Town Hall is just who we host our website through. Uh, we did have, Let's see. Basic stuff. I mean, spam updates, anti spam soft, anti spam updates, antivirus software. We have our um, online permitting solution in there. These are just all recurring costs that we can't get away from. Yep. Unless we're going to start writing our own, which of course comes with its own issues and costs. Yeah, yeah no one we want to get into. No kidding. All right. Uh, okay. So that's software maintenance. Um, training, I noticed that we're adding $300 to the training budget. And the, this doesn't necessarily, this shows what was a, 
appropriated, but it doesn't necessarily show what was actually spent on training. Is that right on the sheet within the workbook? Oh, let me check the cover sheet. I think we're over on training this year because the fees went up a little bit. Yeah, training. Yeah, you're at 112% of, of your, your yearly budget halfway through. Yeah, so training, you buy up front, it's a year annual subscription, but it did go up. Oh, okay. So it's not going to it's not going to change between now and the end of the fiscal year. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was a little concerned that um, that maybe we were going to have like a two hundred percent kind of a situation. But no, no, that three hundred is all that's going over. Right, and in the end, you know, uh, a three hundred dollar, you know, more than we had counted on is not that big of a deal. Sure, I'm sure we're gonna uh, come under other places. All right, um, okay. The rest of the sheets, uh, professional services, uh, you know, you guys are not actually asking for any this year, is that right? Right, the only thing we really had in the past was crystal reports and we just do our own reports now. Right, and that's because we have one guy who who's a whiz at crystal reporting, right? Um, well, I'm I'm doing the reports, and I'm not going to say I'm a whiz, but <laughs> but wasn't there like somebody who we do have? A... So yeah, I work with um, Randy, who's our Munis admin here. Got it. And I might do the the report building, but he knows all the fields to choose, and he knows. He knows what makes sense to put on there. Got it. Because I remember there was like a conscious decision to stop paying for that and to instead do it in house because we had the capabilities to do so. Yeah. All right. Um, office supplies. Looks like you're down 500 bucks on office supplies. I assume that's because nobody's actually in an office these days or? Yeah, most of that would be, um, you, know, you can only do so much printing. Um, there's not a lot that we need. Right. And so then- we Pretty come... much year after year, we would return a lot of that. Anyway, right. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, I'm looking at 5731 subscriptions. And that seems to have changed significantly. Right. That one is one that went up. Um, that's just that's just we had Zoom subscriptions that we had paid for out of um, grants beforehand for the pandemic. So those were added in. Um, the remote support is going up a little bit for our team viewer subscription. And our SSL certificates, those are just um, they were paid for out of other funds beforehand. So it just made sense for their return to put those in here. Got it. Right. So that's like we, uh, that overall, that budget is up 4,400 bucks, yeah. which is, a uh, which is a lot, but that all makes sense. Okay. Um, so, uh, Stefan, Evan, questions, concerns, anything that stands out? Um, I had one question about the uh, the telephone uh, sheets. Sure. Um, <clears throat> are, are these all of the um, um, all of the iPhones or Android phones for the all the town employees? No. So this is only for IT. So this covers the cell phones and the hotspots. Each department will put in a request for their particular accounts. They all kind of manage their own accounts, but if they have questions, they'll check in with us and we'll help. Like we'll, um, we'll review their bills with them if they have specific questions as far as what's this charge for or what's this one for. Oh, okay, so um, so when they go out to, to get new phones for their, their workforce, mm -hmm. it's never done through um, like a centralized, um, centralized service like, like uh, IT. 
they just all go through their own. They have, folks. yeah, so we have one dedicated rep at Verizon that will handle the whole town and they can work directly with her because we all have the same type of plans available as um, government. Okay. Uh, I just, I'm looking at the sheet that Brian sent here and I might have, I might, you might have addressed this, Brian, and I might have missed it. So forgive me if I'm asking you to repeat yourself, but what's our bottom line number here for the 23 requests? Is it 381706? Yes. That's my okay. understanding. And, and 22 is 371671? 22 was 371671, exactly. Okay. There's just like a couple of repeat columns in here, I think. But, um, and 23 is reversed, but, but okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, that, that screws me up all the time when I look at these things. Is that, I, I've never noticed that. I've never had a problem reading it before. Now I'm looking at it like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's usually, you can see them right next to each other, but uh, yeah, there's the two columns in between that kind of. Yeah, and it's like 22 and then, or 23 and then 22. Um, yeah, yeah. Is that how it's usually formatted? Uh, I never uh, noticed. I no, you know what that is? The um, town admin request for FY, it says 2022. That should be 2023. So you're talking about oh, town yeah. FY? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Okay. okay. But that's that's, the, the numbers are here. Okay. Updated. Okay. And then the same with column J that recommended. Yeah, we don't usually see that. I've seen that in like other city budgets where they do like, okay, here's the here's what the department requested, and then here's what the mayor or the town administrator recommends as a result. And I've always sort of, I've never really cared to see that. Like, I think uh, like this is off topic in a way, but like other cities, like other mayors, like to do that to say, look how tough I was on my department head. They ten percent. I only gave them four percent. You know, and so um, it's never really. I, I don't think I'm used to seeing that column here. It's I, you guys are usually in line with Steve, so I, I don't really care to see it. But it doesn't matter. More more data is good. So I just, but that that's what was screwing me up. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I did have one question regarding uh, the transfers, the, the bottom line transfers at the, the bottom of the FY, uh, the summary page. Yep. <clears throat> so um, I, I took a look at all of the, uh, the historical uh, examples that you, you sent out, Brian. And yep. um, I just did like a, a comparison over, over time. Um, so the, um, the, the school transfer hasn't changed uh, hasn't changed uh, drastically since at least FY19. Um, is this still, I, I guess when these were created um, at, at, at some, some point back in time, uh, they represented the reality at that time, how the services were being um, uh, shared across the town. Um, is that still the case? Um, are, are these proportions uh, still accurate? Yeah, so that, later. the main transfer from the schools was kind of frozen for a number of years. Um, and that is one that we talked to them that it's probably going to start going up just with a regular inflation rate. So 2019 and forward, we did start adding additional services. Like we would pick up services that they were outsourcing otherwise and do it at <clears> a lower <throat> rate for them. But um, yeah, with that one one main transfer was frozen for probably at least a decade. Okay. It's gonna start going up. It, it'll be a small increase, but it has to keep up with our costs. Yeah, I have also noticed too that uh, at least the personal services for the IT department, um, over the past five years, the headcount has stayed the same. Uh, yeah. Same folks, it seems. Um, uh, but the, the increase has not been uh, not been significant um, over that time period. So I guess like um, <clears throat> at least these the the transfers um, or at least the uh, the transfers from the enterprise fund this year is sort of a saving grace uh, for us yeah, uh, at the personal services. With that extra work from gas and light, 
it's going to, I don't know how much more we can do to keep driving down, but we'll, um, we'll take it year by year, I guess. I'll just say uh, to Mr. Chairman, I, Stefan, it's a great, it's a good, it's like a good observation. It's a good point. I, and I think I'm in the minority on this, but I, I don't tend to spend a lot of time on these like interdepartmental transfers because they tend to be the G rated version. They tend to be like the source of peeing contests and they kind of don't really matter at the end of the day. Like it's, it's all coming to the place. Exactly. And it's, <laughs> so it's like, and like, yeah, great. Like the school should pay their fair share and everything, but, but it's like, what's going to happen is, they're going to say, okay, you want us to increase our share 20 grand? We'll just come in with a, a 4.12% overall increase in our budget instead of 4.1. You know, like it's just kind of, I think, it, I think yeah. it's like of all the things we can focus on with the schools, I'd rather whine about their contracts than their, uh, you know, uh, but, and I don't, I don't mean to discredit the point at all, Stefan, it's a good observation, but I just, that's always been my approach to these things. Cause they, 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 this is the type of thing that will take, that could take up 90 minutes in a finance committee meeting with people arguing about it. And at the end of the day, like, as you say, Stefan, it's a wash, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the, the one reason why I bring this up though, is um, with these, these, I guess, subtractions um, at the, just the bottom line of, the, of these budgets, there's not a lot of information behind them. So how they came to be. Um, and I just kind of honed in on it last year. Um, but um, and I didn't have the history until I just kind of put it all together. But, uh, you know, over time, uh, these types of transfers, they sort of hide the true impact of, of what's happening in, in any given budget. So like in, in particular for the IT department, just say, for instance, five years ago, when they, these transfers were put in place, if they also put in place, you know, an escalation for cost of living increases or just 3% escalation year over year, you know, the IT department would have, you know, an extra uh, small bucket of money for, you know, for the software increases that they're seeing over time. And uh, the battle that needs to be fought for cost increases, um, doesn't end up falling on the IT department, it ends up falling on the school department where, I mean, I think justification is, is warranted that, uh, that they should fight that battle since you know, they're, they're utilizing the IT services at a greater clip than all the other departments. I can see, yeah, I see both sides of that. It's a politician's answer, Todd. <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see who was speaking and I almost thought it was Evan because he had that <laughs> smile on his face. I was like, wow, Evan, come on. <laughs> no, actually I can. Stefan makes a good point. It's, you know, you do want it, ideally, you want it to reflect the, the real distribution of services. Um, right. In point, many ways. For yeah, historical no. tracking purposes, it matters. So, so you're right. I shouldn't be completely dismissive of it, dis dismissive of it, um, Stefan. So good point. I, to that point, to that point, I have a question, and that is, would you say, Todd, that the, the amount of time the IT department, your department spends working with the schools versus working with the other parts of town government is reflected in that split of uh, paybacks here, chargebacks? I would say, yeah. The, um, if we look at the new numbers with the anticipated amount of work we're gonna be doing with gas and light, then that's a fair split. Was it a fair split last year? That's, that's a great about, um, last <laughs> year. Yeah, I don't think we didn't do many. So Gas and Light has a lot of projects that they've been um, piling up. So we didn't do a lot with them that was outside of our normal scope of support. And is the enterprise fund, is that just Gas and Light? No, that's a mix of Gas and Light, Water and Sewer. Got it. Um, but yeah, uh, may I ask what, what are the projects that they um, that they have backed up? So they have they have a number of projects. I would want to maybe we can talk about that in executive session, just in case. I'd I'd want to talk to um, the IT person over there first. Okay. 
Um, I think actually that's the last question that I have regarding the budget. Yeah, I'm good, Brian. Okay, beautiful. All right, so now, um, what I'd like to move on to is uh, an executive session to discuss uh, IT security concerns because an open meeting may have detrimental effects on the town with the intent of adjourning and not returning to open session immediately after. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Apparently everybody has voted in favor. 